Hello, movie buffs. Welcome back to Yusuf Reacts, the place where cinema meets storytelling. Today, we're diving into one of James Bond's most celebrated adventures, The Spy Who Loved Me. Released in 1977, this isn't just a spy movie, it's the spy movie. Packed with action, gadgets, and an unforgettable villain, it's Bond in top form. Let's break it down. The film kicks off with one of the most iconic openings in cinematic history. Bond, played by the suave Roger Moore, is being chased down a snowy mountain. And just when you think he's cornered bam, he pulls off the ultimate escape, parachuting to safety with a Union Jack parachute. Classic Bond style. This scene sets the tone. High stakes, high energy, and a whole lot of flair. Oh, and the soundtrack? Chef's Kiss. Marvin Hamlish's score, including the Oscar-nominated Nobody Does It Better, is a highlight. The story revolves around British and Soviet submarines that mysteriously vanish. Enter Bond, who teams up with Soviet agent Anya Amasova, codenamed Triple X. Played by Barbara Bach, Anya is no damsel in distress. She's smart, skilled, and more than a match for Bond. Together, they face off against Karl Stromberg, a megalomaniac with a plan to create an underwater utopia. Because, you know, why be a normal villain when you can be extra? And speaking of extra, let's talk about the Lotus Esprit. This car isn't just sleek. It's also a submarine, yes. A submarine, when Bond drives it into the water and casually adjusts his tie cinematic gold. It's moments like this that make you wonder, why can't my car do that? Oh, right. I'm not me 6s top agent. Now, every great Bond film needs a memorable villain, and Carl Stromberg delivers. His lair is a futuristic underwater base, complete with sharks. Because what's a villain without sharks? And then there's Jaws, Stromberg's indestructible henchman with steel teeth. Played by Richard Keel, Jaws is both terrifying and oddly lovable. Who else could survive being dropped into a shark tank and getting electrocuted? The Spy Who Loved Me is often hailed as one of the best Bond films ever made. It strikes the perfect balance between thrilling action, tongue-in-cheek humor, and larger-than-life spectacle. For Roger Moore, it cemented his place as a fan-favorite Bond. James Bond investigates the hijacking of British and Russian submarines carrying nuclear warheads, with the help of a KGB agent whose lover he killed. James Bond is back again and his new mission is to find out how a Royal Navy Polaris submarine, holding 16 nuclear warheads simply disappeared while on patrol. Bond joins Major Anya Amasova and takes on a web-handed mastermind. Known as Carl Stromberg, as well as his henchman Jaws, who has a mouthful of metal teeth. Bond must track down the location of the missing submarine before the warheads are fired. The pre-title teaser shows three different events. First, a British nuclear submarine experiences a serious disruption of power. The Captain Brian Marshall looks through the periscope and sees something foreboding, however we do not see what he does. In Moscow, Colonel Gogol Walter Gotel hears from him Bernard Lee that the British sub has disappeared. Gogol becomes concerned, especially since his own government has lost contact with one of its own subs. He promises the aid of his government and calls his best agent, Anya XXX Amasova Barbara Bach to investigate. In Austria, James Bond is enjoying a romantic encounter in a remote cabin in the Alps when he's called back to duty by M. He dons his ski gear and leaves, his lover says she needs him to which James replies, so does England. As James skis away from the cabin, he's pursued by a group of Russian agents. James is able to evade his attackers and, using a ski pole that doubles as a type of rocket gun, kills one of them, a man who happens to be XXX's lover. Bond approaches a sheer cliff and skis over it, free-falling several thousand feet. Until he opens a parachute decorated with the British Union Jack, escaping his attackers. XXX reports to Gogol in Moscow where she's given her new assignment the search for missing submarines. 
Gogol also informs her that her lover was killed in an operation. Emma Sova is visibly shaken but says she'll dedicate herself to the mission at hand. Bond meets with Emma at a British naval yard where the mission path for the lost submarine is studied. Bond shows M. The Minister of Defense Frederick Gray Jeffrey Keane and others a transparency that shows the route had somehow been stolen. M orders Bond to Cairo on his first leave. In the Mediterranean Sea, two scientists who have developed a sophisticated submarine tracking device. Meet with Carl Stromberg Kurt Jurgens, a rich and powerful businessman who lives in a specially designed city, Atlantis, that can submerge beneath the ocean surface. He thanks the two scientists for their invention, but before he allows them to leave, he deals with his secretary, who has stolen information from him. She enters his elevator and then Stromberg opens the floor dropping her into a large water tank where a tiger shark eats her alive. As the two men leave by helicopter, Stromberg activates a bomb that destroys it and kills them. Stromberg also meets with two hired assassins, the fat Shondor and the tall jaws Richard Keel, so named because he has steel teeth. Bond arrives in Egypt, meeting with the old contact Sheik Hossein Edward de Souza, an Arab Sheik and old friend of Bond. They were schoolmates at Cambridge, who tells him to find a man named Fekish Nadim Sawalha. Bond goes to the man's house where a woman tells him Fekish isn't home and refuses to reveal his location. As Bond kisses her, Shondor tries to shoot him. Bond uses the woman to take the bullet and chases after Shondor. Fighting with him and entangling him over the edge of the house's roof, he forces the assassin to reveal Fekish's location and then lets him fall off the building, killing him. Bond goes to Giza to meet Fekish at the pyramids where he sees XXX has already found the man. While the pyramid light show goes on, Fekish notices Jaws standing to the side. He quickly leaves, Jaws in pursuit. Jaws corners the man and kills him with a bite to his neck. Jaws also escapes Bond. In order to continue the investigation, Bond must meet with a man named Max Kalba Vernon Dobchev at his club in Cairo. Emma Sova also meets him there and the two meet with Kalba to obtain a valuable microfilm containing designs for the submarine tracking system that may have been used to abduct the missing boats. Kalba prepares to negotiate a price with the two government's agents when he's called away to the phone. Jaws kills him in the phone booth after obtaining the microfilm. Bond and XXX stow away in Jaws' van and he drives out to a site of ruins in the desert. The two agents chase Jaws through the ruins, finally cornering him and obtaining the microfilm. Bond and XXX escape in Jaws' vehicle and make it to a boat on the Nile. Bond examines the microfilm on board without Amasova's knowing and the two settle down for the journey. XXX renders Bond unconscious and takes the microfilm. Bond recovers and reports to another site of ruins where he finds Amasova, Gogol and M waiting. With the assistance of Hugh Desmond Llewellyn, they examine the microfilm, which is worthless. A conclusion that Bond came to when examining it on the boat. However, they do find evidence of a symbol hidden in it that identifies Carl Stromberg. Their superiors order Bond and Amasova to investigate on the island of Sardinia, where Stromberg lives. The two travel there by train in a scene that recalls the train ride in from Russia with love. They are attacked by Jaws, however, Bond is able to fight him off and expel him from the train. Upon arriving in Sardinia, Bond and XXX meet Q who has brought Bond's car, a Lotus Esprit. The two meet with Stromberg's assistant, Naomi Caroline Monroe, who takes them out to Atlantis. Bond poses as a marine biologist and meets with Stromberg, who tells him of his love of the sea and how an underwater city like the model he has in his private chamber may be the only hope for the future of humanity. As they leave, Naomi is telling Anya about Stromberg's largest ship, a super tanker named the Lipperus. Bond remarks that the design of her bow is unusual. As they speed away in Bond's Lotus, they are attacked by Stromberg's men, led by Jaws. Bond is able to throw off their pursuit using the car's defenses. They are also attacked by Naomi in a helicopter. As the chase continues, Bond drives off the end of a pier and converts his car to a small submarine. 
He uses a small missile to destroy Naomi's helicopter, killing her. He proceeds to Atlantis, now submerged. Unable to find anything conclusive from outside, they prepare to leave and are attacked by several frogmen and mini-subs. Bond destroys them all with the Lotus defenses, however, they are forced to surface on a beach when the Lotus is damaged by an underwater mine. Back at their hotel, the two plan their next moves. When Bond lights one of Enya's cigarettes, she notices that the lighter he uses is from the city near where her lover was killed. She confronts Bond on the issue, to which Bond replies that he acted in self-defense when he killed the man. Anya vows revenge as soon as their current mission is over. The two spies next find themselves on an American submarine monitoring the Lipperus. While surveying it, the sub is rendered inoperable and is swallowed by the Lipperus. The bow of the Lipperus opens, revealing a large submarine dock inside. The crew are forced out of the sub and taken prisoner. Bond and XXX are identified almost immediately and are also taken prisoner. Stromberg plans to use the nuclear missiles aboard both the American and Russian subs to ignite a nuclear war between the superpowers. The resulting nuclear holocaust will destroy the surface world, leaving Stromberg the opportunity to rule an underwater kingdom. Stromberg departs for Atlantis with XXX, leaving his crew to begin the assault. Bond escapes before he can be imprisoned and frees the British, Russian and American sailors. They lead an assault on the Liberus Bridge, successfully transferring the coordinates of each submarine to the other, causing them to destroy each other. The remainder of the crews board the British sub and escape the Liberus before it explodes and sinks. They set course for Atlantis, which has been ordered to be destroyed. Bond argues that Anya is still on Atlantis and should be rescued first. He is given a wet bike and early jet ski and arrives at Atlantis ahead of the sub. Searching for Anya, he encounters Jaws and outwits him, using an electromagnetic crane to seize his metal teeth and drop him into the shark tank. The shark is no match for its namesake. Jaws quickly bites and kills it. Bond next finds Stromberg in his massive dining room. Stromberg attempts to kill Bond with a harpoon gun located under the dining table but misses. Bond returns fire, hitting the villain in the chest, killing him. Bond finds Anya in a torture room slowly filling with water. The two escape from Atlantis in a pod that surfaces. Jaws himself is also seen escaping the stricken Atlantis and swims off. The escape pod is found by a British vessel which captures it. M. Minister of Defense Gray and Money Penny find the two agents in the midst of a romantic encounter inside. So, does the spy who loved me hold up in 2024? But what do you think? Is it your favorite Bond film, or do you have another contender? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic deep dives. Until next time, stay shaken, not stirred.